What's going on today, guys? Let's enjoy this Sunday talking about slip joints. I want to first start off with showing you my EDC. This is just going to be the same wallet, Ryan pop-off leather combo. I am carrying a Jin Hao fountain pen. More on this later. This is the 911. Love it. Very cheap. Under $2. Free shipping. I also have this Spyderco Military old by now CPM D2 military sprint run and that brings us to our video hopefully I didn't waste too much time this is the pairing for this and when I was putting this in my pocket this morning I thought well why not do an updated slip joint collection and show off some of the fit and finish I don't know I haven't been involved in the community in a while so I don't know how popular these traditional knives are which is a conundrum right traditional means they are always popular and always in style but you know what i mean the youtube video space are they still even talked about but i guess we'll find out in my slip joint collection video this is the gec boys knife with a sheep's foot blade it is the crown lifter model which means it has a crown lifter or cap lifter on it and a little bit of a screwdriver flat tip there i'm not quite sure i have never used it for anything more than adjusting maybe a switch plate screw or something like that i wouldn't put too much pressure on that this is pretty much just for opening your beers or soda whatever i wanted to show off the incredible fit and finish i also want to thank dino he gifted me this knife all the way from hawaii i do appreciate it brother Check out the incredible fit and finish. And mind you, I think this knife was $65, $75, maybe $85. Definitely under $100. I just, I love GEC for that. Incredible value. Look at that. No gaps. You can see the blade 1095. You can see where it starts taking a little bit of patina. And the springs, I believe, are 1095 as well. The um liners might be stainless steel i'm not quite sure on that i know on we'll get to this one later i know on this everything is 1095 from the bolster to the liners to the spring to the blade but we're going to get to that i don't know if they do that on this tidy Ute line so gc if you don't know is a knife producer very high value knives for the money you get an incredible amount of fit and finish. They're all handmade, hand finished by skilled craftsmen for a very reasonable price. You see this one has the easy open. I did not do the mod on that. We will see a few later, maybe one later, I don't know, that has the easy open mod on it that I did. Just a great pairing, wouldn't you think? You got the green paper micarta here paired up with the green sprint run larger man i just love it so anyways let's start off with the tidy ute line usually gc's tidy ute line is plain i like plain in my slip joints i don't like them too fancy a good threaded bolster is beautiful every now and then but i don't like to go too over the top i enjoy working knives i enjoy my traditional knives with patina on them with um wear sharpened and all that you know what i mean i like to see these scratches on here the patina i think a lot of people who are into traditional knives like to see that as well they like to see the brass liners patinaed you see this the spring wraps around here and is nice and flat i had one or two of these i gave them away as gifts and kept this one selfishly i think i kept the very best figured wood and i can't remember what this wood is somebody can help me in the comments you see a slight gap from here to here but for again i think it was under 70 bucks i was very excited for this model this is the number 47. you can tell on gc's knives the first two digits are the model number so this is the 15. they call that the boy's knife the crown lifter variant with these covers and the tidy ute line has like plain shields 
Again, look at the fit and finish. No gaps around the shield. Look how nice everything butts up there. Nice. There's nothing to complain about. It's a working knife that's fit and finish is very good. I wouldn't say, you could say excellent, but it's not up to custom spec specifications. I was gonna say custom specs, but here's another tidy. This is the Talon. This is another one of my favorites. I will, at the end of this video, maybe I'll do a top five carried for my last year. I've been carrying a lot of slip joints. Like I will solely carry this knife to work. Not just this knife, but I mean, this This is enough for me for what my work demands now. Opening a few boxes here and there, cutting some loose threads, whatever comes up, whatever we need to cut stuff with. This is the Model 92, a little bit of patina spot. I just carried it the other day, must be I left some water on it when I cleaned it off, I don't know. Maybe we'll make a video on that. I usually let my things naturally patina, so I wouldn't even worry about that. I wouldn't put oil on it. I would just kind of scratch it with my fingernail kind of off. I would clean it with maybe some soap and water, dry it off really well. I'll do a whole slip joint maintenance video. And they just let that patina naturally occur. As I cut cardboard and stuff, that will wear away and it'll get less and less. And then new patina will form. You can see where I've been cutting boxes here. Natural daylight, these things can really pop with all kinds of rainbow colors. I should have my Instagram um, down below. And whenever I take a picture of my slip joint, I try to show off the patina on it. These two are worn cleft blades. You can see the straight, very pointy tipped. Sheep's foot has more of a hump right there. Worn cleft down. Most of you guys already know that. This is another tidy ute cutlery 15 so this is the boys knife frame just like this one above here you can see the same frames this one has the easy open on it again that was right from factory this is in their knife bright so this does glow in the dark i've got another one we'll show you a little later and this is the bowie style grind on it so you have a nice little swedge here so just because it's the tidy cutlery doesn't mean that they won't do a long pull on it. Usually a lot of the tidy ute cutleries only have the nail nick. Do you see the first three I pulled up here? But sometimes they'll do a long pull on it. But you see there's no fancy inlay in here. It's This is a cheaper cover option. Although I love it, it's very durable. It's light. I've dropped it a time or two and I didn't crack it off. It's probably just a lot of epoxy and glow powder to make this cover. You see no gaps in here. And again, I think this knife was under 70 bucks as well. No gaps in the spring. You see the 1095 blade does have some patina forming on it a lot. I've used this knife a lot over the years. You see how nice, you see how nice the thing. I don't know if the phone paused there for a second. We have a flash flood warning coming in. Hopefully uh, you guys can hear the thunder coming in the background. Again, 1095 blade as of all these are. We'll take the patina. Just a wonderful knife. I love the GEC boys knife. Fits in the hand so well. Very practical. This knife is so light and easy to carry. Now again, I'm showing you how centered up the blades are, but only because some of you guys have been watching my videos for years and I appreciate it. But I wanted to let you know, you know, the fit and finish is just incredible on these things for the money. Yes, they're collector's knives. Once they make them, they usually will not make this model again. I don't think they do, but maybe they do. I don't want to say that as a fact. And then somebody's like, oh yeah, they reissued that knife. But usually that's what's so nice with GEC knives. You have to grab the model at that exact moment when you see it available because they're so incredibly popular that people know that when this knife sells out, my phone's lagging again. <laughs> when this knife sells out, it's gone. You're going to have to find it on secondary. And when you do that, you know, the price will probably increase. So that's it for my Tidy Ute Cutlery by GEC. Again, these are more plain. 
there's usually no logos on the blade, which I like that, no billboarding. This one has it, but for some reason, I do like it on there because it's the special crown lifter model. I don't know. Again, it's, you know, you just kind of come to love your little babies, I guess. So now we will get into GC's Unexcelled line, and I only have one of those, believe it or not. I, I've had a bunch over the years. I've sold it, traded, gave them away, and this is what I've ended up with. This is a Ryan pop-off leather slip case. I will do a review on it later. There's not too much to review. The same gentleman who made the wallet made this. And I, this is just a brass Fisher bullet space pen in there. So when I carry this, usually I carry it in this slip pouch. So this is the unexcelled. Unexcelled by GEC are a little fancier. They may have threaded bolsters on them. Maybe they'll have a little fancier jig pattern in them. Not always. You can find tidy utes with jig patterns. Um, but this, you know, this is the locked back version. I've done a whole video review on this. Let me see the patina there. I don't carry this as much as I should. I do love this knife, but I just don't carry it quite enough. And for a long time, it had side to side rock and up and down rock i personally have taken a lot of that out so i repeened the bolster because the pivots in there peened and then i resanded it down flush and then i rebuffed it so i kind of tuned it a little bit so it has a lot less side to side on it there's still a little bit of wiggle there but barely and then the up and down play i don't know if you can see it is is very minimal now so i fix it a lot you can see actually i can resand down that pivot right there because it must have moved or maybe i repainted it i don't know brass liners and i think they called this some sort of green but it doesn't look very green to me i'm not sure you see the back spring is finished nice the one thing that you have to know gc's lockbacks are not like Spyderco's lockbacks, so they're not as refined. Yes, it's a locking knife. This is very safe, fits in my hand great. If anybody's wondering the model, it is a 72 GC unexcelled, probably impossible to find now. All these are going to be impossible to find, unless you look on the secondary. This has a long pull on it with a nice swedge. So you can see this is just a little fancier version of the tidy ute version if you look for 72s and 72 just means the frame model number 15 just means the frame so they can do i'll show you just keep watching you'll see love this knife 1095 steel nice full-size knife mm, pretty centered i can i'm not sure if i adjusted that or not but i i adjust my knives all the time Slip joints. I'll make a whole video on that, how you can recenter your blades, or at least try. It's a first starting point. But what I did want you to know is when I was talking about the lockback versions, this is normal. So this is just a spring on here for the lockback. Has a notch in there that catches in the notch of the blade, and that's what keeps the blade from being able to close on your fingers. Right? Very nice as far as fit and finish here. Not quite custom grade, but it shouldn't be for under 100 bucks, in my opinion. They're very good. I, I've never seen people do fit and finish as good as them, but here's what I was wanting to show you. See how this tip is up there? You can press this in, and it flexes out the lock bar. You see that? And then the tip or the belly can slam into the back spring. Or usually what will happen on this particular knife, this belly right here, will hit the lanyard tube when you flex that in. But really, it, it doesn't flex. That's why I carry it in the slip pouch, though, so I don't really minimize that. I have a long, the way I can just extract it, pull it out. You know what I mean? So that is the unexcelled. This video may be longer than I was thinking. Of course it would be. And this is the Tom's Choice made by GEC. I love this knife. If you guys have watched any of my videos in the past couple years, looks like it's a little out of adjustment. I carry this knife in my back right pocket 
almost every single day and you can just see the patina that is taken on look at all those scratches all the way down you see the patina on the bolsters you can see where i've dropped it on concrete this blade has a 1095 steel 1095 on the bolsters i think we talked about that earlier 1095 on the bolsters 1095 on the spring now i believe they do harden them to different hardnesses it would make sense to have a spring that's hard right so they have tempered it back to whatever hardness it needs to be and the 1095 sheep's foot blade this did have billboard all over original sheep's foot tom's choice something like that and i have used it so much over the years that that has rubbed off Again, this is the boy's knife frame, model number 15 by GEC, saw cut bone cover. Again, almost impossible to find now. If you do, I think they're well over $300. I think I could put this on eBay anyway right now and probably get 300 bucks for it. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you if you fell in love with this knife right now, as you should. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm a little partial. I just, I love this knife so much long pull sheep's foot blade it's so practical for my everyday no gaps no gaps on the bolster rounded check out the patina i don't know if any of you guys have noticed this because i carry it literally as i close it i throw it in my back right pocket the knife naturally rotates down to the bottom of my back right pocket do you notice the cover these covers were the same color is that cool this was this color you can look back to my old videos but just as this thing has been riding around for over a year in my pocket it's just rubbed off that darker color and got more down to the center of the bone to get to that lighter color that's just so cool to me i, I don't know this is a special run made by i believe knives ship no 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 collectorknives.net had those ran the original tom's choice and i forget who the gentleman was who put it together tom's choice barlow sheep's foot impossible to find good luck if you do that's an incredible knife i don't quite know if i lost that if i would want to spend 300 dollars on another one but i would certainly miss not having that knife in my collection so let's move on. Um, this is a Northwoods Barnside Jack. I believe it's a dog leg style pattern. This is produced by Knife Ship Free, Derek Bone, rest in peace, brother. We do miss you in the knife community. Passed away very unexpectedly, left a great family behind. And my heart really. That one hit me pretty hard, and I didn't know him personally, but I did feel like he was everybody, especially in the traditional knives. Nobody ever spoke a bad word about this man. He is the owner, founder of Knives Ship Free. He purchased the Northwoods um, brand when it came up, and he made a couple knives, awesome knives, under that label. So I, again, I'm not familiar with what they're doing now, but this was one of the ones that he made. Of course, they were produced, not all of them, but this particular model was produced by GEC. There's no model number on the back because it was a special limited run. I modified it because it was very hard to open. GECs are known for a little bit of a stronger pull, which means to open them a little bit stronger spring. Most people like that in a slip joint knife, in a traditional knife because it's a lot less resistant to closing on your fingers so you can see you can push it down that much and it still springs back up if i had to put this on a scale one to ten i would say this is a seven maybe even an eight so i put the easy open mod on this one and i love it i would do it again you see this is true to life this is natural patina. I've never done anything to try to artificially patina these knives. 
Again, if you check out my Instagram link in this description, you might see this knife in its true glory, maybe even with a little bit of extra filters on it. It's hard to capture this rainbow patina on here. Northwoods knife, long pull. This came to me also with a little bit of side to side play and it came second hand. I think I traded somebody something for this knife and it had a little bit of play. They did let me know about it. And then I peened it down and then re-sanded the bolster, re-shined it up and I refurb the knife and then I start carrying it. So trying to show off fit and finish on here. I really like this knife for his character. Not only the story behind it with uh, Derek Bone being involved in this project, designing the knives, having them produced, having them shipped to him, he ships them to us. The amount of attention to detail that his site still currently has. They take a photo of every single knife. It's incredible to be able to get your knife that you got a picture of, especially when you're saying it's a one of a kind. So what I was talking about, the character of this, look how the bone looks a little fat on this side. And I believe this is camel bone, camel shin bone, I think. Don't quote me, I think. Look how it's thicker on this side. When you get underneath, it's thinner on this side. And then underneath here, it's thicker underneath on this side. You see that? And then thinner up top. So it's kind of like a yin and yang. This one's thicker on the bottom, thicker on the top. It feels incredible in the hand. An awesome knife. I love, and I, again, don't quote me. I think this is a dog leg pattern when the frame bends like this. Has a rounded bolster on it. No fancy threading, all that. And then has the Northwoods logo on there. Made in USA by GEC Knives. Love that knife. Probably impossible to find as well. Again, I'm not bragging. I just, I get a lot of comments. Hey, where can I get that knife? It's going to be a lot of Ebay's looking. So again, over the years, I've had a bunch of Northwoods knives. They don't ship in a package. Most GCs will ship in a tube. I think I may have one. I have a case package. Um, I don't know. I do have one here somewhere. Not important. These knives ship in a tube and wax paper. I believe these came in wax paper. I can't remember. But G Northwoods, I'm sorry, ship in these nice, very high quality leather sheaths, sheets. I have a bunch of them. Over the years, I've just collected them. You know, usually if I trade the knife off, give it away, it's in my pocket without the sheath. You'll see why that these are in the sheaths. Check this out. This is the Fremont Jack that I have polished the blade on. Frame skipping. Alrighty. I don't know, I'm using an app to record. I'm not using the actual camera function. Let's carry on. Hopefully you guys can hear that thunderstorm in the back. It is wonderful. I love it. This is the Fremont Jack by Northwoods Knives. This is real ivory on here. Pre-ban, all the paperwork was supposed to be kept up. But Derek and Knives, well, Knife Ship's free, obviously. Derek's company. Again, we're skipping again. Hope I don't know if that's showing. I'm sorry if this is skipping like that. I don't know. So, they this is all the paperwork was kept on the ivory. I, I seen the whole thread on the forums, although I never verified everything. So I know some people are against the real ivory. I understand this is pre banned This was also a gift from a very good friend. Thank you, Shane. He knows who he is. And then I polished the blade. Northwoods knives. When they come to you new, well, at least they used to. I don't know if they do now. This was left in like the natural heat treat scale, the flat. And then the grind of the blades were in that like matte finish. But I went ahead and polished up this blade all the way. I still carry and use it. You can see the scratches, opening boxes and whatnot. If I'm carrying the knife, I will use it. 
I don't care if it's an impossible to find knife, if it's ivory, if this knife, I have no idea what these go for now. I don't even think you can find the Fremont anymore. This is the sleeve board frame. Again, much like calling this a dog leg, I think this is a sleeve board, meaning that it starts out wide, gets narrow. And from, as I understand it, the sleeve board used to be actually like an ironing board, the sleeve board where you put your sleeve of your shirt and you ironed your shirt sleeve. And that's what this was wider and narrows down. I just love the profile of this knife, how it starts wide and then tapers down. Feels great in the hand. Again, most things that are straight always feel good in hand to everybody. So I just love that knife. Let me move my stool here, my back's starting up. Feel all that sitting down. Sitting's the new sitting. I don't know, no, I don't know. But you can see why I keep that in this Northwoods sleeve. And I also have a, it has a pen loop on it. I keep a chrome Fisher bullet on there. I do carry this knife quite a bit. Uh, in wine sales, I dress up every single day and this knife just seems to fit the part very well. Opens up boxes, great. I try not to cut much food with it because that mirror polish on the 1095 blade will patina just like that. If I want a patina, I've got a ton of other knives that can get patina on it. So moving along with the GEC produced knives, I have two more. These are the older farm and field versions. This is the Hay and Helper. I, I tell you the older model because these older ones, and I, I don't know the year exactly, the farm and field were 01 tool steel. This is the 47. So they were 01 tool steel. I have two of them. And this was under 50 bucks. I think it was like 45, 50 dollars, something like that. Look at the fit and finish on it. This one is also the knife bright, same as that boy's knife over there. And oh, one tool steel on these. I say these because here's the other one. Man, I'm going to forget what this is. This is their version, GC's version of the Sodbuster. O1 tool steel. If you find one of these Sodbuster style frames, I forget what they call them. This used to have writing on it. Somebody can correct me below. And this is canvas, micarta, green canvas. O1 tool steel for the blade. And I don't know if the spring is O1 as well. It seems like it is because the spring has taken on a patina a lot like the blade. But don't quote me. But look, even though that this knife was very affordable, I really want to say they're like 47 bucks. No gaps. The spring is nice and, nice and square for the most part. Can't complain. You certainly can't complain. And then I don't know if these are stainless. Maybe not because it looks like they've taken on a little bit of patina there. Liners, I don't know, but they're not brass. You can see it has a exposed pivot, not quite as pretty, but I like it for what it is. This is a hard working knife with a strong pull, which means a very stiff back spring, just made for work. Fills up the hand good, but check this out. I believe these are the same frames, just one is turned upside down and has this rounded. Maybe they're not, because look, I actually don't think they are. I used to think they were, but see how this is flat and then comes up and around? When you flip this one upside down, you can match it. It's not. So they're similar, but they're not the same. I used to, th I don't know why I thought that. But anyways, 01 tool steel, 01 tool steel. If you find these knife models now, they will probably be 1095, just like the other GC knives. I don't have any because I'm just not interested, but know that if you like stainless steel and you don't like all this patina on your knife, that GEC has a brand actually called GEC and they are in 440C stainless steel. And I think the hardness is about the same. So 
I'm, I'm sure they have a big following. I just like my slip joints to have the tune on them. All right, so let's get into case because everybody knows case knives. I feel like so-and-so on case knives. Yeah, some of them are great fit and finish, like the Swayback. And then other ones are like, mm. but it's kind of what you pay for because they're priced very affordable, most of them. This video's getting a little long. We're over 30 minutes now, so I'm going to pull out a couple of them. This is not a case. Um, let's go over the highlights. So this is the Swayback Jack in the chestnut bone. Carried a lot. This will make my top five carried slip joints of last year or this year. You see a fit and finish on the spring comes up. Very nicely done. Being that these are handmade, hand finished, each one's going to be different. Some people, real collectors, may buy three or four versions of the same knife, pick the best one out of the bunch, and then sell the other three. Some will only buy in person where they can actually see the knife and handle it, get to feel the walk and talk, get to feel the spring tension on it, get to look at the gaps because there are big variances. Just because you ordered the Swayback Jack online, know that uh, it may not be as well put together as mine. And that's any of these knives, right? But GC seems to have a higher tolerance on what they will let out the door. Not always the case if I really had to nitpick and I've had this knife for years and years. Maybe there's a slight gap from the spring to the liner right there. I don't know. It's not a custom knife, you know, if you really had to pick. But the Swayback Jacks were really well known for their fit and finish. Like that was the one thing that people came back to case knives after buying this model, after trying a bunch of the GECs. Again, that's just when I was really heavily involved in the community maybe 10 years ago or so. Love this knife, fits great in the hand. It is now discontinued in the chestnut bone with the CV steel. I don't know if it says CV on here, but you can see the patina on here. Um, G's case knives, I'm sorry, do CV for, I think it's chromium, vanadium or something. A lot of people say it's 1095. Some people swear it is 1095, but I don't think case knives have ever let their proprietor, what is it, proprietary, proprietor, whatever, their CV steel out of the bag and told everybody exactly what it is. But I think we all know it's 1095. It handles very much like 1095. So let's continue some other CV knives. This is the CV case. Sod Buster with the jig bone. Very affordable. I think it was under 60 bucks, 50 bucks. Sharpens up great. I think they do a wonderful job when they actually do it. I bought this in person, so I was able to pick the best one out of the lot, and you can see it still kind of has a slight gap all the way up the side. But again, it's a working knife. What can you expect for around $50? This is, I believe, the chestnut bone as well. And I think case, main models like this, they will keep producing them. They're not quite like GEC where once it's produced, it's done. They won't ever do this exact version of that knife again after they made the whatever hundred of them. One or two hundred, three hundred. I, I have no idea the numbers on them. Um, but case, you can usually, there's a little more of them out in the wild. Again, because I think the collector base is not geared towards collecting case knives officially like knife collectors on youtube are probably not going to watch this video and be a case collector they're probably going to be more so a gc collector because gc seem to be more user knives and that's not talking bad about case just understand that as far as fit and finish value collectability in the higher end factory made slip joints I think GEC smokes every other company, Boker and the other big ones. There's, there's a few that are still around. This is a regular CV Sodbuster. You can buy these, at least at one time, you could buy these for like 20 bucks at Lowe's Hardware. CV Steel, this is the yellow Durlin. Just the classic Sodbuster Junior. I think 
everybody probably has one of these or their grandparents have one. There's nothing bad I can say about this knife. It's incredible for the price. The CV steel still takes a wonderful patina, sharpens up very nice, fits the hand well, easy to carry, round it off. Right, so this is the bone jig side buster. You can see it's a little thinner, which is why I wanted this one a little fancier and about double the price. All made in USA. All of these. So that's why it's like I, I can't talk bad about Case. When they get their crap together, they do a really good job. And then even if they don't, still for the money, that's an incredible value. And I forget where this one is. Maybe that box was for this one. It is. No, it's not. This is for the Swayback Jack. Looks like I have marker on this one where I was going to do a sharpening tutorial or going to show somebody. Uh, I don't know. Somebody can help me with the model of this one. CV Steel. There you go. I used to know it's a larger knife, very thin. It's like a trapper style knife, but with one blade. So I don't know if those are still called trappers. I wish I didn't have that marker on there to show you. This is really a nice knife. And how I come about this knife, I forgot my knife many years ago and I was passing a place that had case knives dealer on the outside of it. I ran inside and bought this knife. They had a bunch of different knives, but I think this was like 30 or 40 bucks at the time. Again, in these in the CV steel yellow Durlin, I don't think that they're rare. I really don't. Again, that's that's an ugly spot, but I'm sharpening using it. I don't carry it much nowadays. But I do love it. You can see it's a full length blade. Maybe around three inches. Put it across my palm there. We all know that's the international. If it doesn't cross over here, it's illegal. Right? I'm kidding. And this is a Stockman, but this Stockman is a little different. Here's the regular Bowie style blade. Then you have your sheep's foot style blade there. I really thinned this down to be a box cutter many years ago. And instead of the clip point, what do they call that? The spay blade? This has a pen blade on it. Back in the day, the pen blades were actually used to sharpen the pen, your quill on your pen. Or at least that's the story I was told. Nice little three blade knife. I really like it. I took this in on a trade, but when I got it, I was very surprised how good the fit and finish was. This is an older one. And I've been told that this model's kind of hard to find because it doesn't have the spay blade on it. So I beat the crap out of this. This is, was a beater knife for me for a while. But I was told because it has the pen blade, uh, these are kind of hard to... It doesn't mean it's valuable, it just means it's harder to find. Great knife, but I usually don't need three blades. We're going to wait for this to catch up. See what's going on here. I don't know if it's recording right now or not. I'm sorry if everything's lagging up. That's not your computer. And maybe it won't even show. It's like the video's cutting out for a second and coming back. CV steel, probably 1095. This is a stainless, and I don't know. Do they use 420C for the stainless? This is a peanut model. Not a whole lot to show here. Just know that I still have it. Love this little knife, has a pen blade on it. Very small. You can do a lot with this knife though. It's a little two finger knife, maybe three. This is your pinky. Very useful knife. I should have got the yellow one so I could get the CV. Usually the yellow scales mean you get the CV, you get the carbon blade on it. But this, I bought this at the time because I had an orange hinder, one of the original custom ground ones by Rick Hinder himself back when they were, you think they were hard to get like five years ago? When they first came out, almost impossible to get. I had an orange one. I traded out the butt knives to get it, but I had it. Um, and I bought that to pair up with it. It was nice for a while. This was a gift from somebody. They threw it in a, a package when I was fixing one of their knives. Little boker, 
tree brand um, sharpened away. I think I tightened up the so there wasn't as much wiggle in it, and I think that's all I did to it. Maybe I sharpened it, I can't remember. Old knife, I have no idea if it's valuable or not. You can see the spring is so weak it doesn't pull that pen blade down. Cool gift though. Won't ever sell it. I love the jigging on that. Doesn't seem like it's made bad or anything. Just old, I wish I had more information on it. I've never looked it up, Boker USA. Cool though, I don't know the backstory on it. You can see it's been sharp and carried and used a lot. I've carried it maybe twice after fixing it up. I should start carrying it more, right? Kind of a shame to let it sit around. I love old stuff like this. You can see it's about peanut size here. All right, so the main event was an awesome gift. Thank you, David. He knows who he is. This is my only custom slip joint. I carry it probably more than I should, but then again, does that sound like a stupid statement? Because it's such an incredible knife. It was made to carry and use. Check out the hamon on the blade. I don't know the steel on it. Tracy LaRock, I think he's still a part-time maker. But I did a few things for David and not enough to justify this knife but he had it made for me. So he knew I liked the green canvas micarta. And I don't know if Tracy was in on it too, but just incredible. Thank you so much. Now there's what we talk about when we talk about custom fit and finish. Look at that. Look at how he has milled out this liner. And then if, if you were to take this knife out, I would assume there's little rings milled out where it's the full size of this. So that's what lets the walk and talk, the action work. Very stiff action, but it's a full size knife. I wouldn't want it any lighter than it is. Fits wonderfully in the hand. So comfortable. Thicker blade stock. You could use this like any tactical knife if you were to keep in mind that you're only cutting things with it because it is a non-locking knife tracy larock i've been following him on instagram for a long time even before uh, i received this wonderful gift and uh just always been a fan of his work i i never justified putting an order in with him but i appreciate the crap out of being able to have the privilege of owning this. Look at this. No gaps all the way down there. Incredible. And I'll put his link below too. Tracy LaRock. I don't know if he's still taking orders. Did you guys notice that the thickness on the micarta, even though it's been rounded, is still the same here? And then it's contoured this way as well. An incredible knife. Love carrying it. I need to sharpen it again. This is still his edge on it. I need to touch it up. You see the patina forming on there. You can see where I've cut a lot of boxes with it. Again, kind of a work of art, but I personally, and I know for a fact that David and probably Tracy like seeing it this way versus being brand new. This is obviously a knife that will get passed down the family. This will never be sold or traded or gotten rid of, much like a lot of these, especially if it's a gift. If it's a gift with a cool story, I love it, you know? So that's my slip joint collection, guys. I know, 45-minute video, but I did promise you guys one more thing, didn't I? What was that? Does anybody remember? Maybe a top five most carried out of my collection. And I won't really be able to put these in order, but I'll try. But understand that this is just going off feeling alone. There's no data taken, so I have no idea. It's completely correct, but here we go. Top five. I didn't write this down. I didn't really think about it a whole lot. We know for a fact it would be this for sure. 
and the Tracy LaRock. I could put this in here and this in there. Now this is going to be super tough. Man, if you really, really, really pare it down though, it might go something like this. As much as I love this knife and I do carry it a lot on the weekends, and as much as I love this knife and do carry it a lot at work, there might be a few more that I carry a little more. I only really carry this on the weekends because it has an extra layer, which means it's a little thicker, my slacks to carry throughout the workday. But I know for a fact I do carry these. I know for a fact that I carry this quite a bit. I might carry it more than the Barnside Jack. So we'll put the talent up there. What is the other one? It really might go like that. I bet it goes like that. And you might be able to put this sway back about even with the Fremont Jack. So there it is. I'll commit to that. If you guys were to find any one of these knives in my top five, heck, in my list at all, I think that you'll be pretty happy. I tried to show them gripped up in my hand so you can see about what size they are. Sodbuster Jr. I have a medium to large hand. Probably more towards large, but, you know. Again, top five, probably in order like that from top down. Yes, this is a big knife. Yes, this is more like carrying a tactical locking folder as far as size. But again, I, I just love this knife so much. Putting it up against the military, just so you can see exactly the size. I do carry it, I just carry it, and I know it's a, a little bit large, heavier. But again, usually if I carry a slip joint when I'm working, wine sales, I'm not carrying another knife. My, my two, three, four knife days at work have been over for about a year and a half. Oh, I love that thunder. Got the door open in the shop there. So again, not that these are better than these knives, but if you were to ask me what I carry the most, probably goes GC boys knife. You, again, you can see the patina on the covers. Probably this Tracy LaRock custom. Then this Talon, Tidy Ute, Barnside Jack. I love this knife so much. Love all of them, but I, I I think the design of this is just so appealing. Um, and then the Fremont Jack. So that's it, guys. That's almost an hour long slip joint video. I hear you guys. If you guys want a more detailed look at any one of these knives, and I haven't done it yet, please let me know. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking the video out. I have a lot more videos planned. This is one of them that we can say is done now, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, I wanna do a maintenance uh, for the slip joints. There's not a whole lot you can do. I use a lot of mineral oil and toothpicks, um, but there's still some tips and tricks where you can actually submerge the whole knife and scrub it with a toothbrush and hot water and not get rust pits and stuff like that. And there's also tips and tricks to keep patina off of your blade so we'll we'll do tips and tricks later um and then maybe if you want i don't know if i've done that video yet maybe a cv a carbon steel i, I don't know why i said cv that's case of steel do a like carbon steel versus stainless steel pluses minuses as i see it i don't think for us it's as big of a deal as it was in the past because a lot of us are hobbyists and um carbon steel you know if it was good enough for our grandparents to make their living on the farm where they didn't even give a crap about a knife they just had to have a knife and now we're carrying them mostly for fun you know obviously we all need to cut things but not quite like they used to you know especially living on the farm where maybe you was actually uh castrating your cows with your large stockmen with your spay blade this is a pen blade but it should be a spay blade there 
I don't know, you'd have to look at the history. I don't have any large stockmans, but you know, maybe you was cutting your apple or your food with the, the large blade back in the day, cutting hay bale with your sheep's foot blade, and then uh, the knives used to do a lot. And, then, and you know, we, we don't quite have that need like they used to. I still love traditional knives. They might be my favorite knives overall, I, at least for the past year and a half, two years. I love the wear that they take. The 1095 steel sharpens up beautifully. All you need to do is strop it usually. It will come back. They're very tough steel. 1095, great. 01 tool steel, great. I wish I knew what steel that was. The hormone on that. Just tell work of art. All right, guys. I've talked long enough. We'll see you on the next video.